Hi there and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to use the probe compensator signal as our test signal into channel 1. Our probe is also set to 10x ratio. There's a reason for 10x. 10x gives you a higher band pass of the probe itself. If you look at your probe specifications you'll find out that the band pass for 1x is much lower than the band pass for 10x. So it's always best to use your probe in a 10x mode. So once you connect your probe you need to go to channel 1 menu and make sure your probe matches what the oscilloscope thinks it is. Right now our scope thinks it's a 1x. We're really using 10x so we have to change that. So we click on this button right here and now we get to change it to 10x. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to scroll down to 10x and select. So what really just happened? Well, if you take a look at the front panel of the real oscilloscope, anytime a menu appears over here on the, on the screen, this knob becomes the selection knob. You rotate the knob to make your selections move up and down, and you press on the knob to make the actual selection. Well, so on the virtual screen, we're doing the same thing right here. We're ro rotating the knob down or up, and we're making a selection. So that's what I just did. I selected the 10x probe setting. So now our probe matches our oscilloscope on channel 1 and we're looking at a signal and we can't see much here. So as we mentioned in earlier lessons, we would click on the auto run button. The auto run will automatically configure the scope to get an acquisition of a signal that's useful. So now we can see there really is a signal there. And we can turn off and on the last menu with this button. So we're going to turn off that menu get it out of our way. And at this point, we can change the scale, the vertical channel 1 scale, with channel 1 selected. So we can change the scale up or down. So we went from 500 millivolts to 1 volt, say down to uh, 2 volts per centimeter which is shown over here, 2 volts per centimeter. We can also slide the scale, I should say, the signal channel 1, and we can move a position up or down. When you do that, you sort of start losing track of your DC levels. But fortunately for this scope, it shows you the DC level offset. So we move the signal up and down. That's all well and good. We can also change the time base of the signal over here with the horizontal scale. And then we can change the time base. Now our time base went to 200 microseconds, 100 microseconds. We can also position the time base. In other words, we can slide the waveform on the screen. So we can slide it one direction. And if we decide we want it back where it was originally, when you push on the position button, the horizontal position button, let's take a look at that real quick until we get used to these buttons. The horizontal scale and the horizontal position button. So if we turn this button left to right, we can slide the waveform left to right. When we push on a button, it takes it back to where it was when it was originally triggered. So let's see what that does. I moved the waveform to the right a little bit by changing the time offset. So it's a trigger minus 28 microseconds. We moved it 28 microseconds to the right. So if I push this position, horizontal position button, push the button in, it will take it back to where the trigger time is where the reference is. There's no offset from the trigger time. So you might find a use for this. You may not. Something else we can do with this signal is down here on the horizontal time base scale, the rotating knob, if you push in on the knob once, click it in, you get this effect. They call it delayed time base. I call it expanded time base. It expands the bottom waveform, which is a copy of the upper waveform. Notice the blue, that part we can't see on this bottom waveform. We only see the part that's inside the blue lines. 
So once we've expanded the waveform, we can actually change the time base for that waveform. Now notice the time base is listed right here, 20 microseconds. As we change the time base, you can see that the black area up there gets narrower because we're stretching this bottom out more. We're expanding it more than the original signal. And we're looking at just this part of it on this entire screen. So this can be very useful if you choose to look at this leading edge. Notice how this leading edge is actually rounded. Up here it looks like it's nice to square. When you look at it closer, it has a curve to it. So the expanded time base allows you to see those differences. If you push the button again, the horizontal scale button knob, you push the button in and it goes back to a normal display. This can also be done using the menu up here, the horizontal menu. If I click horizontal menu button, you notice it says delayed off. They call it delayed, I call it expanded time base. We can call it delayed to match them. If I click F1, which is your top button, top gray button, and it goes into that mode, it turns it on. And I click the top gray button. One more quick look here. Top gray button right there. If I click the top gray button again, then it turns it back off. So down here on the scale knob, we got a shortcut to turn that delayed time base on and off. I just wanted to make you aware of that. The vertical scale, the vertical position controls also have some shortcuts built into them. Notice right now that the baseline of our channel 1 is down here. 0 volts is up here at the top. So it's down. If you push in on the rotating knob for the vertical position, that will take you back to 0. It takes your baseline back to 0. Notice it jump back up to 0 volts. So that's real convenient if you want to get things normalized. You just click this, takes you back, centers your baseline back to zero volts. The scale also does something for us that's unusual. If we select channel one menu, you go down to the second page of the menu, you see that there's a volts per division course. We can make it fine or coarse. What that means is that when you turn this scale knob, the scale increments jump in fine adjustments or big adjustments. So let's demonstrate that. Right now we're in coarse, so if I change the scale in this direction, it jumped from 2 volts to 5 volts. So I'll put it back where it was. Now if I change it to fine, the same motion on the knob changes it from 2 volts 2.05 volts. So, so what it does, it scales the rotation of the knob. It takes many more turns of the knob to get small increments in the fine mode. And then obviously in the coarse mode, it takes fewer rotations of the knob to get the same results. So what I want to point out here is that the scale knob itself, if you push it in, it has a click to it. When you push it in, it changes from fine to coarse division. See how now it's coarse? I push the scale button and again scale knob and now it's back to fine. So if you're in a hurry and you're in fine you just push in the scale knob and make it coarse and then go ahead and make your adjustments, coarse adjustments. It gets you there much quicker than trying to go 0 0.05 volts at a time in the fine mode. So now you understand how that works. We'll go ahead and put things back where they were. We're in a coarse mode. We'll scale it up or down. Get the signal a little bit larger so we can work with it. And we'll go back to page one of the channel one menu. 